The title of the message is, What Child Is This? What child is this? Okay? Everybody is excited when a child is born. We tell everybody. And, uh, but this child, every year, we think about, not only every year, but it is something different. It is not just uh, um, any child that is born. Okay? And uh, even when the child was born, it was uh, um, joy to many. But also, in the, historically speaking, it was a great sadness in that uh, place also. Because King Herod, who was an evil king, um, who murdered many young boys up to age three, because he was fearful that uh, he didn't know who this child was. So he made a decree uh, to destroy many children. So there was a, a wailing and weeping. And it was prophesied many centuries before, but that happened, fulfilled when Jesus Christ was born. So what child is this? This child brought joy to many Tears in many eyes, but brought astounding transformation, historical significance in the history of man, the world, okay, mankind. And uh, so still, it, it is not just a history we are talking about. It is a wonder that happens in our day-to-day -day life also. If it is something happened, we are not talking about something just an event that happened, historical event. It happens when you receive Christ in your life, that transformation, that power, that hope, that healing, that wonder that happens in your life today also. That's why it's so significant. It's not something we're talking about, oh, like, you know, this event happened on such and such day. You know, it is happening even till today in transforming life. That's why it's making it amazing. One of the remarkable thing of the evidence of what, who Christ is and what he has done. There are more than 300 prophecies. One of the prophecies, let's turn to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. It's amazing how God sees this world. Child who was born, prophesied by Isaiah. It is a remarkable. It is for who? It opens with God's generosity, God's understanding for man. It is not a historical fact happened for unto who? Unto who? Christ came for you. For unto us, the child is born. We have to have that kind of memory and understanding and ownership that he came to seek and save me. Christ came for you. For unto us a child is born. It is our desire. God had you in mind. Each and every one of you. He was born for you. It is the reason. He, that is the reason he came for us. God was generous. God was so considerate of us. It is, God can be in every place and every time. He is the omnipresent, omnipotent God. And so unto us a child is born. He is not forgiven for anybody else. It is for us. He is given for you. And then it is, so there are so many things we can talk. Today I want to focus out of the four. Next week I'll be talking about the last two. And today I just want to fo fo focus about the first two were the names of God. What kind of child is this? What child is this? It is not like any child. Many of the times we speak of a child with the intention that this child will be so great. So we give the great names of the child. But it is not true. This child is totally different. There is prophecies that have been spoken from the generation for 700 years before or even times before that. The character of the child. The child is going to be born. It is going to be called Wonderful Counselor. Everybody say Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. Not just Counselor. Okay. His name is, first he is called, he is going to be called Wonderful Counselor. Many of the times we count, go to Counselor. Why, why do we go to Counselors? For guidance. Is that right? You go for comfort, go for guidance, Lord, teach me how, what, the, how to make decisions, best decisions. Family counselors, okay? Therapy counselors, we have a, 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 a drug alcoholic counselors, 
we have uh, uh, baby counselors, all these counselors, so that we make the right decisions in our day-to-day -day life. The people who has a greater understanding should be the counselors, is that right? You don't go to counsel people who never had that experience, is that right? Sometimes if people come and ask me certain things, if I don't know, I shouldn't say yes. Do you get me? I should say no, I don't know, okay? And But people go to experts, pay hundreds and thousands of dollars, okay? And pay millions of dollars, ask for suggestions, okay? How to make the right decisions, okay? But God says, not with, in your life, there's one counsel you need, is the wonderful counsel. It's God. He knows every aspect of your life. It is not just an ordinary counselor. He's not just a good counselor. What kind of counselor? What kind of counselor? Wonderful counselor. He is a God of wonders. Okay? He is a God who's, who was and is to come. He, he knows your ways. He knows. He is a supernatural counselor. He is an extraordinary counselor. It's the wonder of this child. Sometimes we put in a boxes to our man's imagination. And we put in a manger scene. But it's okay to remember what happened. But let us not dwell in that manger scene. He's not a child anymore. He's not called baby Jesus anymore. He's a wonderful counselor today. He's a, next thing is, he's what kind of God? What kind of God? His name is called Mighty God. There are many people claim to be God and goddesses. Many great men and many philosophers, many great people have erected, they have constructed gods and goddesses. But nothing and nobody can compare to the mighty God. He is not a powerless God. He is not a God who just spe who hears the prayer, he answers the prayer. He is not only God who promises, he is God who fulfills the promise. He didn't give Abraham a promise and forgot about it three days ago, later. Many of the times, the people we love so much have a great intentions. When your own parents will tell you, I wish I can be there, I know your prayer, I know you're hurt. A spouse, when they go through challenges, I, we want to help. A child that goes through problems, many of the time we long to help the child. Many of the times we can't do even with our best intention. But God says, you know what, not only I have an intention, I have the power and ability to fulfill what I want to fulfill. That is a mighty God. Many of the times men and women, even forget about the evil people who are false, falsely prideful in their ambition and promise and they don't do it. Forget about those things. I'm talking about good people have good intention to do some things. Parents have a great intention for their children, but yet they couldn't help. That is the ability of man. Spouses have a great ability, desire. Community leaders have a great desire to transform a culture and community. But I tell you, with men, the Bible says it is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. Can you trust this in the name of the Lord? He, that's why... Isaiah looks back and he says, you know what? He's not just a God. He says, he could have said, he's a counselor, he's a, com he's a God. No, he didn't say that. He will be called wonderful counselor. And what kind of God? Mighty God. What kind of mighty things he has done that day and today that blows beyond human understanding. First of all, he defeated the death. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 55. He says, death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? He speaks to death and he says, you know what? There's one thing existing human being cannot speak to and stop is death. Is that right? He, Jesus, nobody took Jesus' life. He gave his life. There's a difference between Jesus. Yes, he died. He died with the intention and a purpose because he want to win the death in behalf of you and me. Because the death, sin, sinless lamb has to die for the sinful man. That's the only reason God died. Jesus died. Nobody can take Jesus' life. He says it takes only one second to get one angel. 
the whole Roman Empire could be in ashes. That kind of mighty God, nobody can take his life. He said, you know, I give my life for you. He said, he spoke to death and he says, death, where is your sting? Nobody has authority over life and death. He had authority over life and death. That is the power of this mighty God. Next thing is, he had power over sin. Romans 6, chapter 14, verse 14. God, he is a sinless lamb, became sin for us. He redeemed us from the sin of man. He's a mighty God. Nobody can forgive our sins. Only God can forgive our sins because he is holy. If a person must forgive your sins, he must be holy. God is righteous. The Bible says, you know, we can identify some of the things that the Bible explained is his righteousness is wider than if you want to see snow, I'll take you afternoon outside. How beautiful this white snow is. His righteousness is that pure. Don't come two days later and say, oh, it's pure like that snow. No, that's dirty snow. It's whiter than snow. Today you have to go and see outside. Do you see the power and the righteousness of God today? He's a sinless lamb. Next thing is, he defeated Satan. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. He said, well, he made a promise, I'll crush the head of the Satan one day. And he died on the cross of Calvary to die, to crush the he Satan's head. So he had power, he's a mighty God, mighty power over Satan. The mortal enemy of man is not another human being. There's only two spirit we fight against, God's spirit and evil spirit. The mortal many enemy of you is not your neighbor who done something bad, not your husband or wife. It's the spirit that dwells in them. So don't pray for the husband to be punished. Pray for the spirit that in them should be punished. Pray that God will change, they will have the right spirit. If you hate somebody, if you, if you feel like hating somebody, don't hate them, hate the spirit in them. Ask the Lord to de divide, the, destroy that spirit, that you will have a greater understanding because we are just a host, okay, partakers. I pray God had a greater plan, not only bringing you redemption, bringing the ru root of the redemption, okay, who is the cause of that evil is Satan. He overcame Satan. He bound the Satan. And next thing is he defeated the grave. He won victor victoriously. If you want to read Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. Finally, he establishes, he overcame the hell and gave us eternal life. He overcame the hell and gave us eternal life. Who in the world who can give this to you? This is the true need for you, for eternal existence. He gives you salvation. He gives you forgiveness of sin. He gives you life over death. He gives you eternal life. And relationship with the living God. Nobody has ever done for you. Let us not forget that. This Christmas, the greater privilege and the greater gift we have is not the album we make, not the TV we bought, okay? Not the Santa Claus picture. It is the wonder child. The wonder bread we have is the Christ, the manna. Hallelujah. He's the living manna of our life daily. That we should never forget where our source of help comes from, where our hope relies upon. It is the Savior, is a mighty God.